You just need to be 100% carefree and sweet no matter what comes your way. Unless it's like blatant disrespect. Hey guys, Hector Castillo Poppy from GirlsChase.com. Today I want to talk about feisty women, fiery women, women who have attitude and are a little bit sassy. Some of you might not like these type of women. You find them bitchy and cunty and annoying and rude and snobby. And with some of them, you might be right in your judgment. They might actually be pieces of shit and they just, you know, they'll defend themselves as, you know, they have attitude and they don't put up with bullshit, but for the most part, they're just kind of cunts. But some of you will like them and the ones who don't like them, then this video is not for you. So find a different video. Uh, but for those of you who do like women with a little bit of sass and a little bit of attitude and, um, you know, I, I think that these women are attractive, especially for long-term partners. Um, because once you get past that initial sass and cold behavior, uh, they're really quite sweet. Some of the sweetest women you'll find are actually the ones who are feisty in the front and I see it as a test to kind of weed out the bitch boys from the men who can handle it. Um, and of course, some of them go too far with that and you just have to be toxic in return to get with them. And that's one strategy. And that's why a lot of toxic people end up with each other. Um, but I find them to be good partners because they only allow the best around them. And I want a woman who has high standards and who doesn't put up with piss poor behavior and calls it out when they see it. I find that admirable and I respect it. So I'm talking about those women. Uh, the women who really deep down are actually little kittens and they're lovey-dovey. Um, and they're fun to be around because they can keep you a little bit on your toes. Uh, you still want to be, you know, the dominant one, the one who can out feist her or can push past it. Uh, or just melts her ice and when she's around you, she doesn't feel that way. She doesn't feel like she has to have her claws out, right? In, in, a, in a way you tame her, not in a bad way. I know that these words dominant and taming her can seem um, whatever you want to call it, misogynistic, sexist, whatever. But from what I've seen, women really like that, okay? So, you know, I've gone over this a thousand times in different videos, so if you don't like that terminology or the way I phrase it, well, yeah, then you need to start with some different videos of mine and work your way up to this. So, feisty women. There's three ways to seduce them and to get with them. Uh, if you are sensitive, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but you really just don't like any sort of disruptive, disagreeable behavior, it's just not gonna work with them. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you, it's just not your type. There's three ways to go about it. You're gonna have to either out feist them and be feistier than them, you know, fight fire with fire. You're going to have to be very stone cold, right? And just an icy rock that isn't melted by her fire and just survive the onslaught. And then she'll see that you're not moved by it and garner some respect for you and have some admiration for the fact that you're not perturbed by her bitchiness. And then there is the, in my opinion, most fun way, but it is the most difficult way because it has the highest chance for her to think you are weak and can't handle her. And that is to just be uber, uber nice, right? So let's start with the, the most common way to deal with these types of women and the most common kind of guys who probably end up with them. So out feisting a feisty woman. First, you have to have the mentality that it's not personal. Even though saying something is impersonal, you know, something's not personal, for the most part, it's bullshit because uh, most things are actually personal, even if someone's, it's like when someone says, you know, no offense, but and then they proceed to say something really offensive or no disrespect, but then they, they say something really disrespectful. But you need to treat it as if it's impersonal. You have to understand that this is just her default mode and that it's not necessarily you that she's being bitchy towards, she's just kind of bitchy in general. And I'm gonna be using bitchy and sassy, just kind of don't take offense to it. I'm just using words, okay? So she's gonna be acting very sassy and it's just her default mode. And you need to understand that it doesn't speak to who you are, right? And this is actually a good lesson for socializing in general. And once you understand this, you're never gonna take offense to what she's saying. Because if you're going for the feisty approach, 
Um, you can't break it. You know, I've had that. There's a, there's a time once you do kind of break down her barrier and she's more open and nice and uh, diplomatic with you. Um, but you have to wait until that moment because what happens is if you go for the feisty approach and you fight fire with fire and you give in too early, she's gonna feel like she won, right? Uh, seduction isn't inherently combative in an adversarial way, but there is a little bit of playful fighting in there. And anyone with experience with women would understand this is true. Uh, I've seen women who I would be really feisty with them and then I would break it too early and I would try to be sincere, be like, all right, come on, you know, let's relax. And that would make them feel more, I, you could see their chin go up a little bit higher and they start to act a little bit more dominant and a little bit more superior. And then they start to be very dismissive and cold towards you, not even fiery, they're just now cold. And this is unfortunate to see because I was thinking, okay, I thought we were playing the game and then now I'm trying to be nice and you're just acting like more of a bitch. That's just their personality. So you have to, if you're gonna go for the fiery approach, uh, you're gonna have to take it all the way until she's seduced by you, until she's locked in, until she's hooked, until she's really into you. And then and the main sign that you got to this point is when she starts to act nice. So you cannot break until she breaks first. Then when she starts to be nice, then you can also be nice back. Right? And people can still be fiery and nice, you know? Um, Behaviors aren't that static and one dimensional, but you know what I'm talking about. So she's, you know, giving you sass and teasing you. You gotta tease her back. You gotta give her back everything. You can't let her get away with anything. Every little barb she gives you, you gotta give it back and you gotta give it back better because she wants to feel like she's met her match. She needs to feel like she met a guy who can take it and give it back to her twofold. Now, of course, you can go too far with this. You know, a lot of people think that they're very strong and toxic and, and that they can out-toxic other people and out-troll them. Um, this is coming from someone who literally, like my entire seduction process was just that uh, for a long time, especially in college. And you can go too far because like I said, people will think that they can be toxic and trolly, but the moment you give it back to them, then they start fucking acting like the victim. Okay, and these people are really fucking annoying. Really, really annoying. They'll be really, really toxic towards you, okay? If they're just, in general, kind of have some attitude, but they're not going after you and you start going after them, okay, then you're being the douche, right? But if they themselves are really teasing you and being a douche to you specifically, and then you give it back to them and they start to act like the victim, that's really shitty behavior, right? And I've seen a lot of people do that, a lot of people. I've even gotten fired from a job for it because people at work, I was working at a bar, they would give me shit. And then I give them shit back and then they took it really personal. And I was like, okay, I thought we were playing who can be more toxic, who control harder. So you do need to be careful not to take it too far. Um, and it can kind of get you in some bad situations uh, cause girls can act like bitches. And if you call her out, uh, be like, hey, quit being a bitch, right? And then she'll fly off the fucking handle and start like, you know, she'll tell you to fuck off and start like, yelling at you and then, you know, of course guys are gonna take her side and her friends are gonna take her side. You know, it can be kind of a, of a risky approach. Um, so you do also need to be careful what environments you're in um, and if you know how to fight and if you can stand up for yourself. Um, because if you take this approach, you're going to, it's not like you're just gonna like turn it on, right? You're gonna be like kind of this guy in general um, and you're gonna, you're gonna rub some people the wrong way. Um, so don't take it too far. The, the trick to not taking it too far is to make sure that it has some teeth, but it doesn't seem like you're genuinely, genuinely insulting her. It needs to be, it needs to be obvious that it's a tease. And so people would, you know, insult me and be toxic. And then my response is, okay, cool. I'm gonna go ten times, right? What you just did, and I would like put on my resting bitch face and just be like, given that fucking toxic ass look, and just be like, listen here, bitch and just start fucking trolling them and roasting them and fucking pointing out how they're fucking stupid and they're trying to act smart and like they, they act like they're cooler than everyone and call them out, right? Ugh, it, it, would, it got me in some, <laughs> I mean, sometimes girls would just love it, right? And sometimes it would just really fucking go sideways and fucking crash and burn. So you, you need to be measured. And so you want to give back as much as she gives you and just a little bit more, right? Or 
as much as she's giving you because a lot of really toxic people are actually really sensitive. They just become toxic because they're sensitive. So give back to her as much as she's giving you plus a little bit more. Don't take it personal and don't break until she breaks first, right? That means not complimenting her. Don't, uh, don't validate her, right? Don't give her too much attention. Um, make sure your body language is not totally towards her, right? Only you gotta really match her. If she's like in your face and being all sassy, then you need to also give it back, right? But if she's kind of being aloof and kind of this and kind of just giving you barbs mid conversation, then you also need to be like, oh yeah, okay, da 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 and give it back. And then slowly pace her emotions and then adjust to hers and keep keep pace with it. And then once she starts to act nice, then you can give it back or then you can get you can give it back you can start being more sincere the best example i have of this is when um i was out back in california and i sat down uh at a hookah bar and it was at the end of the night it was like the last and i still fucking hate that i messed because i i went too far because this girl was fucking smoking hot like goddamn gorgeous and i remember meeting the girls we were sitting with and I went to go shake one of the girl's hands. And I like, when I shake girl's hands, I kind of do like a more like nice, sweet, old school kind of handshake. Not like, oh, like, I'm, like it's a business handshake. And I shook her hand like that. And she just looked at me and she what did she, she said, uh, be like, why don't you shake my hand like a man? And I, and I immediately, I was like, I looked at the guy I was with and I was like, and he looked at me and smiled. He's like, uh oh, it's on. I was like, who is this girl? Like I gave him this look and then I looked at her. And she's like, come on, you gotta shake my hand for real, right? Now this was flirting. She wasn't being a bitch or she was being bitchy in her flirting, but it was flirting, right? So I looked at her and I said, that's how I shake a girl's hand. And she's like, how are you gonna get a job if you shake someone's hand like that? And I said, am I in a job interview right now, right? And everyone laughed and she kind of giggled. She's like, okay, you got me, right? Then she, then I, she started to break immediately because she said, you know, you're lucky you're cute and you can get away with it. And I was like, okay. We're in, right? She spit some venom at me, I spit some venom back, we're cool. Then, you know, she really started to, to take a liking to me. We started talking more. Then she came over uh, to sit next to me and we started talking some more and of course, sass, sass, sass. And then at some point she started to chill out because I could tell she was in an attitude. And the reason I knew this is because I kind of suggested that we fuck. And I don't know, I said like, I want to take her home or this or that, but in a like, you know, kind of like douchey, like, yeah, you know, I want to fuck you. Be like, oh, yeah, you're kind of hot, like I'd fuck you. Cause it was sexual at that point. Cause she was, she had given me the cute compliment, right? If she wasn't giving any sort of like attraction like that, then you don't want to be so direct, but it made sense for the context. And then she said, yeah, no, I'm definitely not in the space for that. I said, why? And she said, you know, I just broke up with my boyfriend. And it was just like, I don't know, like a couple days before or like a week, something really, really recent. I was like, oh, what happened? And she's like, well, he wanted to focus on work. And I was like, okay, well, that sucks. And she's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, so that's why you're kind of in this mood. She's like, yeah. So, you know, there is always a reason behind people's behaviors. Even if they pass it off as like, I just have attitude. Like everyone who has attitude has some problems. There's a reason that they have a spiky personality. So I started to kind of deep dive her on the relationship. And then I, you know, I kind of, how long are we together? Da, 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 right? So she started to open up. And I started to open up. And then I was like, well, one of the best ways that you can get over that is by having some great sex with me. And she was only in town for like, I think that night or something. And she wasn't actually from San Diego. So she started to think about it. Like she started to be like, well, you know, and started to, you could see she was mulling it over and it was interested, but wasn't quite there. And then I started to go really sexually direct. I was like, look, I could take you home. I could fuck the shit out of you. We could have a great night, give you a bunch of orgasms, you know, stretch your pussy out and like fuck a really fucking direct. And again, she was she was still distance, but she was considering it and she kind of was doing a lot of thinking and a lot of like cheeky smiles. But then she started to go back to her sass because you know, she didn't want to come off like a slut and immediately just say yes. So she, there, there was a very important point where she said like, I forgot exactly what she said, but I said something like, um, what do you not like sex, right? And she's like, well, no, I love sex. It's a lot of fun. And then I kind of too douchey said like, then what's the problem, right? Then why are you, why are you acting like, you know, like I, I started to become 
condescending with, because the frame was that, you know, she was interested in sex. This is what was going through my head. Okay, you were sassy. I get it. I'm sassy too. You're upset about your boyfriend. Have some rebound sex. I know you're into it. You're thinking about it. You're obviously interested in me. You were flirting with me. Now I'm going to kind of troll you for not being a woman and being mature enough to just like do what you want to do. Right. That was the attitude I kind of had. Like, well, why don't you just grow up and get over your ex situation and just have some fucking fun. And it was a little bit too toxic. And I did it with too straight of a face and too dry of a tone. And she just like fucking from 95 to zero, right? She was so close to fucking me and then just like turned away. She even like started to turn away from me and got up and sat down on the couch uh, across where she was originally. And even the guy who I was with and he was talking to his girl, he's like, what happened? He's like, because he saw that we, she was flirting with me the whole night. He's like, what happened? I was like, I fucked up, <laughs> right? And so I walked over to her and I was like, hey, you know, I did it. And she's like, mm. right? Now, the, how I should have went about it is a little more complicated. I should have probably apologized before she got up um, and just like been more cool uh, because she did start to lower her guard but uh, it was too little too late. And I, and I was kind of, I was too, I became too soft about it. Like I should have been apologetic, but I should have done it in a more detached way. I kind of was like, hey, I'm really, like I really felt like I fucked up where I should have been, okay, I know I fucked up. I need to like smooth things over, like a more relaxed attitude, but I was way too like, oh, I'm sorry kind of way. And she just, you know, she took it as an opportunity to get me back for the way I made her feel. I understood why she did it and uh, ended up losing her. And she went with her friends in the car, in the guy's car, and drove off. And they even told me, like, you wanna come? But I was just so fucking pissed off that I'd fucked it up, right? So I kind of, I might have, like, fixed it with her, um, but I was just too fucking, I, I felt like I failed the test, you know? Uh, and so I just, like, went home. Um, so the fieriness worked, and then we started to break the barrier and it was more playful flirting at that point. And then I went back to being toxic and it was too much, right? So that's a cautionary tale for keep it up until she breaks and then don't go back to the toxic behavior. So that's how you out fiery her, right? Now there's a second method where you can kind of just withstand the storm. Now this is where in that, in, in that story where the girl like shook my hand and I could have just looked at my friend and be like, who is this girl? And then just totally ignore her. That would have been the stone cold method, right? That's like the stone cold stunner. It's like, I just look at her or like my friend and be like, I don't know who this girl is. And then just like go back to smoking the hookah or, smoke, or smoking my drink, drinking my drink and just looking around and not being just totally unfazed by her. I'm acknowledging it, right? Cause there's a big, here's the biggest thing with doing the stone cold method. You can't look like you're avoiding conflict. You just have to look like their conflict is silly. Like, what are you trying to do? And it's a little bit annoying. You find it annoying or silly. It can't be that you're afraid of conflict. And afraid of conflict is when a girl's being bitchy and you're like purposely trying to avoid eye contact and you're afraid to confront her. Stone cold is when someone's being bitchy and you kind of look at them and you're just very relaxed. It's like, it's just the waves crashing over you and you're just like, that is stone cold. That's the attitude you needed to have. So just have normal conversation with her, right? If she's still engaging you, engage her. I'm not saying you need to ignore her. Stone cold isn't literally, right? It's you're engaging her and she's being kind of bitchy and you're just like, mm, okay. And you just pummel past her, right? You're not giving her too much validation. You're not being too sweet. You're not being nice, complimentary. You're not giving her too much attention, just the barest amount of attention. And then you still have to wait until she breaks where she decides, okay, whatever I'm doing isn't working and I need to be more cool with this guy. And then when she starts being more nice, then you can start to open up a little bit more and be a little bit more sweet. Now, the third method is just being really nice from the start. And this is like stone cold, but plus being really nice to her. And the mentality you need to have here is that you see past her bitchy attitude. You see past her walls and you see that she's a cute kitten beneath her claws. And 
you, you need to be experienced with women for this to work. Or you just need to be the most carefree, sweet guy on earth who doesn't allow negative emotions to bother him at all. And there's not a lot of people like that. So the best way you need to do this is if you're really experienced with women and you definitely have a more like cute, warm, flirty personality. If you have that, then you can make this work. Now how this works is if in the situation with the girl who gave me shit about my handshake, when she teased me, I should have just looked at her and smiled and just, <laughs> and then looked away, right? That, see there's two different approaches. One is giving her shit back, right? Saying to her, what am I in, in a interview right now? Do I have to shake your hand, right? And kind of make everyone laugh, give her shit back. Stone cold, just like, oh, okay. And not be phased by it, but not be avoiding eye conflict. The sweet method is you just run through the flames with your with your hands out and saying, oh, you're so cute. I know you're just, you know, you're just a cute little kid inside. The best um, representation of this, I remember I was working in, it was still in California and I was working at the club and there was this girl who was like the head of the table who, you know, was obviously the alpha female and she had like 10 or 15 people with her and I was taking care of them. I was working the table and I could see the way she treats everyone. She treated everyone in a really like catty, like kind of dismissive kind of manner. She was mama bear, right? And I came in and I'm just really sweet. And I was just like, hey, can I help you guys? Did I... No, I was getting some level of respect just because I'm working, right? But I was just really sweet. I saw past her fucking bullshit, right? And I was just like, hello, you know, I'll, I'm Hector. I'm here to help you tonight. You know, if you need anything, let me know. I'll be cleaning up, take care of you. And she's like, oh, thank you, Hector, okay. Boom, right? We started off on the right vibe. And no matter what she did, I would just, I would be next to her and I'd look at her and I'd smile, like the sweetest, most innocent, childish smile. And she just, every time I was around, she's like, hi Hector, how are you? I'd come up to clean, da da da. And I just kept it and I just kept this mentality, like you're sweet, you're cute. And she was really, really hot. And I was just like, you're, you're just a cutie pie. And, and that was just the look that I had on my face. Like, you know, you could be the bitchiest bitch and it just doesn't phase me at all, right? And at some point, I went up to clean, someone had dropped a, a glass and she was standing on like a kind of this, not the bar, but she was standing on you know, the couch and she was up above me. And I went to go pick it up and clean it. And I tapped her, her calf and she looked down. She's like, hi, Hector. And I was like, was this you? And I kind of just really like teased her. She's like, no, no, it wasn't me. And I was like, okay, you know? And I started to clean it up. She's like, hey, Hector. And I look up and she's just leaning down and just starts making out with me. And I was like, oh, this is great. So I clean it up and we start kissing and then I like tap her and I'm like, get down here. And she's like, okay. And I was like, look, you give me your number and you're coming over tonight. She's like, okay. And I did, <laughs> it's one of my favorite stories. Oh man, I, I have so many great fuck up stories. Um, so <laughs> you're thinking, how the fuck did you mess this up Hector? Well, I found a way, okay. So um, I take out my phone and I hand it to her and like put in your number. now. I don't remember this bitch's name, okay? <laughs> and you're about to find out that that was a big mistake. So she puts in the number and then I, I take it and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna save it as like bar girl or something really quick. But I think she notices that I don't know her name. Cause I'm like, maybe I like took a half second to pause before I entered the contact information. Now, if you, by the way, if you want to get around this, a lot of times if you forget a girl's name, ask her how she spells it. Even if it's the most like, a, you know, it's like, Anna, and, it, and and she says, uh, A-N-A. I'm like, oh, I don't know. It might've been two N's, you know? Um, or you, you can say, put your full name so I, you know, so I know who it is or something like that. Um, but if you do forget a girl's name, and I should make a video. Did I make a video about that? I'm not sure, I think I did. And I might've told this story, but she saw that I hesitated. And, or you just remember a girl's name. That's one way to never fuck up is just become really good at names. Whatever you have to do, like just say it in your head a thousand times. Uh, but I'm horrible with names. So she saw that I was hesitating and she, she looks at me and she says, <laughs> and I was like, fuck. And I took the worst approach possible. I, I started to uh, kind of avoid it. Like I was like, do you think I, I forgot your name? I mean, I've been drinking a little bit at that point. Cause you know, when you work at a club, you fucking drinking is part of the job, but uh, it was not the right approach. I should have just said, if you really truly forget a girl's name, just admit it, be like, look, I fucking suck with the names. You know, my mind is like Swiss cheese and I'm just really horrible with names. I'm great with faces, but I'm really horrible with names. I'm sorry. Because that would have fit with my approach too, 
right? If you're going for the nice sweet guy approach, you gotta stick with it, right? With the fire rate, with the stone cold, you gotta be cool and cold and calm and collected like a cool cucumber the entire fucking time until, you know, you guys become a little bit more uh, relaxed with each other and you're in your own little world. But I wasn't yet there. She was super into me, but we weren't yet in like the calm, like she's just 100% about it. I mean, she said, yeah, she wants to come fuck me, but we still weren't there. And I needed to keep up my, well, actually no, the, the sweet thing, you gotta keep going the whole time. So with the other two, like it's one phase and then phase two and you kind of change. With the sweet approach, like you, you, you gotta be that the whole time. And when I did the, pff, pff, you, you think I'd forget your name? It's a bluff and it looks like I'm being insincere because what's beautiful about the nice and the sweet approach is you're being ultimately sincere. Like you're being your full self without letting anything perturb you. And I started to back off that. And I should have just been like, I'm sorry, sweetie. I totally forgot. I know if you're mad at me, I totally get it. I won't blame you if you don't want to see me. And then she would have said like, okay, fine. I'll let you get away with it. Like that would have been because I've had situations like that. That would have been her reaction. But instead I fucked up and I was like, I think I'd forget. And she, she called my bluff and she looked at me and she's like, delete my number. Now I kept talking to her throughout the night. We ended up texting a little bit in the future and she did invite me out to spend a day with her but it didn't end up working and it was that um it was that that moment that really fucked it up and then i was apologetic after but i i, I showed a little bit of difference in, in who i was and that made her question if i really was as nice as i was acting so that that's the difficulty of of being super nice you gotta it, you gotta stick with it right and it's gotta go whole way okay because you need to be completely kind of not free of ego. It's not the right way to explain it. I think that kind of phrasing is overused these days. You just need to be 100% carefree and sweet no matter what comes your way. Unless it's like blatant disrespect. I'm not saying you need to be nice through like serious disrespect, but even if someone's being a douche, you just need to be like, think to your head like, you know what? Something's going on in your life and you're angry because of that and just ignore you, not good vibes, get away from me. So you can still stand up for yourself when you're really, really nice, but. Now, that's my favorite approach, is to be really, really sweet through all of her bitchiness. Um, because when you see it work, it's magic. Like the first two approaches kind of make sense intuitively. Like, all right, if she's being feisty, be feisty back. Or if she's being feisty, just act like it doesn't bother you at all and just be stone cold and strong and masculine. That's the attractiveness of it. And it makes intuitive sense. This one kind of doesn't make sense because you would think being nice to a girl who's being bitchy doesn't work, right? You know, all the red pill would say that that's just nonsense, but it's my absolute favorite approach. It's like fucking magic, right? Just seeing what happens when you are so sweet and so nice, like, like your innocence but it's not innocence, right? Because you actually have to go through a lot of shit to get to that point, right? You usually have to go through your asshole phase and your angry phase and your depressed phase to get to a point where you're really sweet no matter what a woman throws at you because you've seen it all and it doesn't bother you, right? But what you kind of do is you, you return a girl to her innocence and she feels like she doesn't have to have her walls up. Because the other two approaches, they deal with the wall. With you, is you kind of convince her through your vibe and your energy not to have a wall up at all. And that, to me, is the most magic approach to seduction. I think that's like the master's touch. That's the minus touch of seduction, where your energy can just destroy all of the games that most people play. Even though people say they don't play games, everyone plays games. But if you can truly lower those walls and not have to play those games, that's fucking magic seduction. And that's my favorite kind of approach in general, but especially to uh, feisty women. So. That's how you deal with feisty women. That's how you pick them up. Um, and then once, you know, they, they're they they're not being feisty anymore, uh, then you can just be really cool and just sincere with them. And then they'll be really, really attracted. Most of the seduction is done once you get past that point, right? So that's just the main idea you have to have um, to get past the claws. And then she'll be really cool and it'll be a lot easier to just, you know, invite her home for whatever. Uh, so yeah. That's how you do with feisty women. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hope it helps you go find some beautiful feisty girls. Feisty girls are fun. They're exciting. Uh, and they're not, definitely not boring. Definitely not boring. And uh, yeah, cool. So uh, follow me on Instagram, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Again, hope you enjoyed the video. 
and I will see you soon. Ciao.